Good morning. Good morning. It's great to be gathered with you here this morning at Hanfield Global Methodist Church. We're so thankful you've decided to uh, join us today and worship the Lord uh, together. As we begin this morning, just a few announcements. Uh, first of all, on one end of the aisle or the other, there should be red attendance folders. If you could just grab that and register your attendance there and uh, pass that down. And if you have any information that's uh, changed, it would be a great way to update that uh, so we can have the, some up-to-date information. Uh, so just uh, pass those down one way or the other. And then if you also don't get our Hanfield Happenings newsletter, as you're passing those, you can just write newsletter as a comment in there. And we can make sure that you get that email that's sent out uh, every week. Uh, also, next week, uh, the blood drive, we'll be, have a blood drive here. Uh, there's a, a link to sign up for that in the newsletter and how you can do that. So, uh, again, if you don't get that, you can write that down in the attendance folder. Or let one of us, uh, one of the staff here know at Hanfield and make sure that you get on that list. So next Sunday will be a blood drive. Also, next Sunday will be a safety training session that will happen right after church. So if you uh, would want to volunteer with our children or youth and have not been through the safety training, that's a requirement that you must go through in order to volunteer uh, for them. So if you need this safety training, you can see uh, Shirley Sadler about that and then uh, stay after church uh, for next Sunday for that safety training, which also goes along with the next announcement about uh, VBS. So if you have some volunteers may need training for VBS or if you would like to help with that and have not received that training, it would be a great time to do that next week. And our VBS, uh, again, just a reminder, is July 28th through the 31st. Mark your calendars for that. Uh, we look forward to that. and know that that will be a great time uh, together. We look forward to that time and save those, save those dates. And then also uh, out in the, the lobby as you walk in, there are still some devotionals for both men and women um, for Mother's and Father's Day. If you've not yet gotten one of those, I encourage you to do that and to read through those. It can be very helpful. So uh, grab one of those devotionals if you have not yet done so. And... Uh, if you still have one of the baby bottles that you took on Mother's Day to fill a change and forgot to bring it back, uh, let's bring those back on Father's Day, uh, I believe the Pregnancy Help Center will still take those at any time. So if you, if you haven't brought those back in and still have, uh, you can bring those in and we'll make sure that, that they get to them. Uh, so just bring those in. All right. Uh, that's all for the uh, announcements this morning that I have. So would you join with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for today. Lord, it is good to be gathered in your house with your people. We are so thankful for that. We give you thanks for who you are. Lord, we praise you that you are here and that you are with us. Lord, we are thankful for that this morning. Holy Spirit, we praise you would come in this place, fill this space, and fill our hearts and lives. May we be able to worship you fully and wholly today and every day in Jesus' name. Well, I want you to think with me for just a moment and think about what was the best day of your life. What was the most blessed day of your life? What was the happiest day of your life? I want you to stand as you're thinking about that, have that in your mind, and maybe lean over to somebody else and tell them what your blessed, happy day was.
and share that joy, that smile with someone else and greet them in the Lord today. Say hello and welcome.
waiting here for you. The Lord of all creation, still you know my heart. The author of salvation, you loved us from the start. Waiting here for you with our hands lifted high in praise, and it's you we adore.
Jesus, breathe within. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way in me. Like a mighty storm, stir within my soul. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. we're going to go to the Lord in prayer and as we do here at Hanfield if there's a request that is on your heart or if you would like to intercede on behalf of someone else we just ask you stand where you're at and those around you can lay a hand on your shoulder and the rest of us will uh, stretch our arms out towards you as we gather with you in prayer so this morning if you have a request or would like to intercede on behalf of someone else would you stand Let's pray. Lord, again, we give you thanks this morning that you are here and that you are with us. Lord, we praise you for that, that you are with us. We are so thankful for that, Lord, that, and, and, and we will wait for you. Lord, as we just sang about, Lord, I, we are so thankful that you are patient with us when we don't deserve that. And Lord, sometimes we just need to wait for you and your timing. So maybe there's somebody here today that's struggling with just why aren't things happening quicker or faster or the way that I want it to. But Lord, we pray that there would be a sense of peace that would just fall upon them as we wait for your timing. And Lord, waiting can be difficult. So may you come and give us your strength and your perseverance and your peace in the midst of that as we trust you. Lord, your faithfulness endures forever. We trust that you are faithful. Jesus, we know that you are alive, as we sang about, and we are so thankful for that this morning, for the hope that we have in that, the hope that you are always with us. Lord, we praise you this morning, that you are ours and that we are yours. May it be so. Lord, we give you thanks that you invite us to be a part of of your story. Lord, that you invite us into your family, and I pray that if there's anyone here this morning, Lord, who who doesn't know you, who hasn't accepted that invitation into your family, Lord, may they do that this morning. Lord, I pray that you would be here, that you would soften hearts, that you would make us receptive to what it is that you want us to hear today. Lord, may you open our hearts to be able to hear from you today. And Lord, as we surrender all to you, I pray that we would be able to, to be good stewards with what it is that you have given us, then that we could go all in as we surrender all. So Lord, may we 
be good stewards with what it is that you have given us and give us the wisdom and guidance and direction and how to use the the things that you've given to us, whether it's resources or our time or energy or, or talents or abilities, Lord, may we use those for you and may we use those well. I pray, Lord, that we would be good stewards. This morning, we also stretch our arms out towards those who are standing. You know what it is that has brought them to their feet today. And Lord, we trust and believe that you are already at work in each one of these situations. And we give you thanks for that. Lord, I pray that you could be with those that are standing, that your presence and your peace would fall upon them today. Lord, may they know that you are with them, and may your will be done. So we pray that you could be with those that are standing here today. Again, Lord, this morning we give you thanks for who you are and what you have done for us. You are so, so good, and we are so thankful for that. Lord, we pray that you would come here as Uh, to Hanfield and give us the guidance and direction and what we are to do and how we are to do that. And Lord, may you receive all the glory and honor and praise for what is done here for you and you alone are worthy. Holy Spirit, we ask this morning that you would come and open our eyes that we may see from you. Holy Spirit, may you come and open our ears that we may hear from you. Holy Spirit, may you come and open our hearts and minds so that we may understand from you. May we turn to you and be healed. We pray all this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, the children are dismissed to second half ministry to meet Miss Beth by the double doors in the back. And as our children go and gather uh, with her, we'll say a prayer over them and their time together, as well as a prayer for the tithes and offerings that have been or will be collected. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for these children. We know that they are a blessing from you, and we are so thankful for them and their families, and pray that you could be with them during their time together. May they grow closer to you. Bless that time that they have, we pray. Lord, we also give you thanks for this opportunity to give back to you what is already yours. So we pray that you would bless these tithes and offerings. Lord, this morning may you uh, bless both gift and giver. And may we be good stewards with what we receive in Jesus' name. Amen. You are here. Moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Because you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. 
worship you. Yeah, I worship you. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 Even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Father, indeed, you are the worker of all miracles. You are always working and moving here and everywhere around the world. So we thank you for your work. And we ask, Lord, that you would continue to work this morning. As your word is read and proclaimed, we give you full access to ourselves. As we sang a few minutes ago, we surrender all, all things to your glory in your disposal. So would you work in us, Lord? Give us ears that are open to hearing and hearts that are bent toward responding in obedience to any way you may call us today and every day. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. What well, is indeed a good day to worship here. Amen. Amen. Just thinking about how God is working, it's not related to what we're talking about per se, or maybe it is. Um, just a, a cool story that, uh, that I learned this week. Um, so many of you are, uh, you, you know, you all know, if you've been around for a while, you're familiar with Pastor P. All and the, and the ministry that he's doing, and he's coming back in August uh, to, uh, to come here, and, and he's going to visit some other places. He's going to be here at Hanfield uh, in the middle of August, and um, I was emailing with him back and forth this week just about some of that, some of that, um, uh, some of that trip and, you know, what he would like to do and see while he's here. And, and one of the things that he mentioned to me, he wanted to go back and we had connected him last time he was here, probably five years ago. We connected him with World Missionary Press, a printing press that prints gospel tracts in New Paris, Indiana. And he and I drove and spent the day up there. And, and he said he'd really like to go back there uh, because he said that they, they've been sending him, I mean, thousands. I know the first shipment, they sent him 50,000 uh, little scripture booklets. And they've been, you know, he's been uh, sh they've been sharing those. And he told me, he said that since that time, he said at least 200 plus people that he knows have come to Christ. 
because of those little scripture booklets that we just connected him with while, while he was here. It, isn't, isn't that awesome? We can praise God for that. So just an awesome thing for us to be a part of that and to, and to see God working in that way. And I was really excited about that. Uh, um, so we're, con- we're concluding our uh, stewardship series this morning uh, that we've been on. We took a little break last week, uh, or did we? Uh, we took a little break last week for the, um, <laughs> for the uh, 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 Youth Sunday, and the, and the children kind of gave, uh, children, <laughs> the, forgive me, youth, <laughs> not children. The kids gave their, <laughs> they gave their testimony about what had happened at camp, and, and, and that was an awesome thing to hear, hear how God was working in them. And interestingly, as it pertains to stewardship, um, something that we, we've done at Hanfield for the last uh, probably four or five years, I would say, is that, that any kid that wants to go to camp, uh, we've, we've paid for it. We've just paid for the, for the entire uh, thing, the entire um, trip uh, you know, to camp. And um, how we've done that actually is, maybe some of you are aware of this or not, but thinking of stewardship, this, this actually fits. It's just, to me, fits the, the culture of giving and the culture of stewardship and the culture of generosity that I think exists here at Hanfield. Um, and that we pay for that using funds that were, uh, that were donated by, um, by Melvin Hall. Some of you might remember Melvin Hall's way before my time. But when he, when he donated, we talked to several weeks ago about using, making a bequest, and he made a bequest. And apparently, if I've got the story right, Pastor Tim, you can correct me if I'm wrong, um, he, he used to sort of on the sly, he would, he would pay for kids to go to camp. If they didn't have the funds, he would just pay for it. And so what we've done, he donated a whole big chunk of money when he died, and we have used that money, uh, the interest income from that, to pay for kids to go to camp. In the past four or five years, we've just paid 100% for any kid that wants to go to camp. So, so again, that, that's kind of, that is, that's kind of the, to me, that's an awesome thing. Uh, again, the people of Hanfield um, are, are truly uh, generous people and, um, and, and investing in the lives of kids. And so we have inherited, uh, you know, again, from Melvin Hall and I'm sure so many others, Pastor Tim, this, this legacy of generosity um, with our financial resources. Interesting, and as I've been thinking about this stewardship series and thinking about Hanfield, uh, I was reminded of another story. Uh, we were talking about, I mentioned something about COVID a little bit in the, in the Sunday school. I, we were talking about that COVID era of things. And um, I remembered, as I was thinking about Hanfield that pertains to financial stewardship, I remembered a conversation that I had with Judy Caldwell. She's not here today, so I can, uh, I can talk about her, you know? And this just this is not being recorded, right? Stays with us. Okay, is that fine? Uh, I, remember, <laughs> I remember I was having a conversation with, with Judy uh, right when COVID had first started and and one of the things that, that pastors are kind of aware of, not that it hopefully it doesn't have too much bearing on what we decide, but like it, um, that usually when you cancel, if you cancel service for weather or for something like that, most people, most of the time people don't, they don't make up that giving, right? So if you cancel services for a Sunday, you, um, you just give up like 1 52nd of your income for the, for the church. You just kind of know that and you just, that's how it works. And, um, and I remember talking with Judy Caldwell. I can still see she was just standing in the doorway of my office. I'm sure we were six feet apart. You remember the whole thing? <laughs> but, uh, and, she, and she said to me, we were talking about that sort of thing and how that worked. And, and she said, with full confidence, she said, oh, that won't be a problem at Hanfield. That's what she told me. Just that level of confidence. I was like, well, okay. You know, I wish I had your confidence. But she, that won't be a problem at Hanfield. Just total confidence. And I said, okay. Well, and you know what? She was right. During that whole season uh, in which we weren't meeting as a church, we weren't really doing a whole lot of things. It was one of the worst time frames in my life. I'm sure <laughs> bad for you all too. Um, but nevertheless, the people of Hanfield were faithful in their giving. And, and, and we, we, other churches, that was not the case. They were struggling financially. It wasn't, wasn't true here. So again, that's, that's kind of the culture that Hanfield has. And, and so, so it's kind of like, I almost feel like in, in preaching a stewardship sermon series here, not that it's a thing we need to do, it is a thing we need to do, but it's like, it's like what, is the, what is the phrase? It's like, a, it's like a softball, you know? You just pitch it up there and then you guys can knock it out of the park, right? That's the, <laughs> that's the, uh, it was a sports reference, Jeff. You didn't like that? Okay. Um, but so, as I said last, so we've been in the ser- sermon series, so today's in, in, uh, titled All In, right? And we've been talking about uh, the basic idea is that we've, we've submitted ourselves to the Lord, um, then what He really wants from us is everything. He, he, he wants all that we have and all that we har- are to be submitted to Him. And so stewardship then uh, becomes a whole life that is surrendered to God. It's a whole life that is surrendered to God. 
Um, it, it, so if, if, we are to give, if, we are, if we are to give all that we have to the Lord, then the question we should ask then is, what is it that we've been given? What is it that we have been given? Um, and, and we're going to talk about that a little bit today. I've been most excited about this passage that we're going to talk about today. I've been looking forward to the sermon um, more than all of the rest of them since I started to kind of plan out this series. And, and in fact, I believe that if we got what we're talking about today, if we got it deep down into our bones, then I believe that everything that I've said up to this point would be unnecessary. If we got, if we got this, what, I'm talk, what we're talking about today, deep down in our bones, everything else would be unnecessary. And so the question we're asking today then is, what is it we've been given and what are we supposed to do with it? And I think Jesus is, gives us some insight into both of these things. We're, in order to help us with that, we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, um, verses 14 through 30. Jesus is, is he's in the middle of, of describing the kingdom of heaven. He says what the kingdom of heaven is like. And he, he describes these different things. And then he comes to this in verse 14. And he says, for it is for it is just like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, and, um, and, and to another one he gave, uh, or he, and to another one, each according to his own ability. And he went on his journey. Immediately the one who had received the five talents went and traded them and gained five more talents. In the same manner, the one who had received two talents gained two more. But he who received one talent went away and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the, the master of, of, of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came up and brought five more, saying, Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See, I have gained five more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things and enter into the joy of your master. Also, the one who had received the two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted, you entrusted two talents to me. See, I have gained two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things enter into the joy of your master. And the one also who had received the one talent came up and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. And I was afraid, and I went away and hid your talents in the ground. You see, uh, see you, ha you have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I, did not, where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have put my money in the bank, and on my arrival I would have received my money back with interest. Therefore, take the talent away and give it to the one who has ten, the ten talents. For to everyone who has more shall be given, and, to, and he will have an abundance. But from the one who does not have, even what he has will, shall be taken away. Throw out this worthless slave into the outer darkness in the place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God, Thanks be to God indeed. Um, I've always liked this passage, and I've always thought that if I were ever to become a prosperity gospel preacher, maybe I've shared this with you before, I don't remember if I have, if I were ever to become a prosperity gospel preacher, you know, a TV preacher that's like asking for your money and invest your money with me and God will bless you and stuff, I would use this verse. I would use verse 27 uh, because, and I, I could use it and no one else could. This would only work for me. Because verse 27, in other translations, like in the NRSV, it says, then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. <laughs> and I just think if I were ever to do that, I could use that in a way that no one else could. It would work for me, Right? Well, I'll try not to do that, okay? But uh, so, so this this parable. Now, parables um, are, are are stories where Jesus uses an earthly uh, language to describe a spiritual reality. And so, whenever we uh, are, whenever we interpret one of Jesus' parables, uh, we recognize that Jesus is not he's not speaking directly. And so, everything and everyone in the parable represents something. And we've got to be about the business of interpreting what it is that Jesus means. Um, and so if you've been around the, the church for any length of time, you probably heard this passage uh, preached, and, and it's one of the most commonly referenced parables 
uh, you know, in the, in the Gospels. And usually uh, when we talk about this, uh, sermons are pretty straightforward. And they seem, uh, they, you know, they, they go something like this. You know, in this parable, the, the master um, who is going away for a long time represents Jesus who is going away and will return. And the slaves in the parable represent the people to whom Jesus is um, talking, and by implication, all of us, that is like, you know, Christians and believers, right? And so the master returning represents Jesus returning in all his glory to pronounce the judgment um, that will happen at the coming of the kingdom, right? And so we don't, we, that part we, we understand, we don't have to uh, um, guess at this, because if we read one verse beyond, if we read verse 31, Jesus makes the work of interpreting this passage very simple uh, when he says, uh, but the, right after we finish, he says, but when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then, then he will sit on his glorious throne and all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another. And then he goes into that other really famous passage about separating the sheep from the goats, right? And so, again, that actually lends some importance to, uh, to this passage because, you know, do uh, you want to be a sheep or a goat? You know what I mean? So you got to pay attention to what Jesus is saying here, okay? And so the lesson that we learn from this passage then is that we're supposed to use our money or maybe other resources in a way that will impact the kingdom of God uh, and help it to grow because we realize that everything we have is simply something that has been entrusted to us through our care as stewards and we are not owners of it just like the um, just like the servants in the parable right that's kind of the way we usually hear this passage and that's not a bad interpretation and that would make a pretty good sermon um, but I think there's something I think there's actually something else going on here there's something just a little bit deeper. I think it's, 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 it's quite helpful and true, but I think there's something more in this passage. Because do you see the funny thing that we do when we interpret it? Um, we say, okay, the master in the parable represents Jesus. The servants in the parable represent, you know, all Christians. And, every, uh, and the, the, the money in the parable represents, well, that just represents money, right? And all of a sudden, we become very literal, right? These represent different things, but all of a sudden, we, 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 with the, when it comes to the money, we say, well, that just represents money. Very, we interpret it very literally. But do you see the disconnect there? I think Jesus, wait, so this is what you're thinking. Wait, wait a minute. Pastor Curtis, are you about to tell me that my money's off the hook? You know, like that he's not talking about my, what I do with my money? Well, I don't know. Hang with me and you'll see. We'll decide. You can decide that at the end. I think he's referring to something much deeper in this parable than simply our monetary resources uh, that are, or, or, that are we're supposed to invest in his kingdom. Like I think he's talking about something deeper. Or maybe some of the other interpretation that we get is, um, you know, we make some kind of connection between the ancient word talent and the modern word talent, and so we think that we're supposed to, um, so that means we're held responsible for all of the skills and gifts and abilities uh, and opportunities that God has given us for the growth of his kingdom. Um, and that's a pretty good sermon, right? Those are not necessarily bad things, and in many ways, that's that's kind of what we've been talking about in the series up to this point, isn't it? Um, that, you know, all of these things, our money, our talents, and all of the skills, and all of the things that God has given us are entrusted to us uh, and to be used for his service. But I think there's something much deeper than, than those things. There is a connection that I think uh, would have been much more apparent to the original hearers uh, and the original readers of this parable. Um, and and that, is, that is what Jesus means when he refers to the word talent. A talent. That's a strange word. And uh, the word talent is, is a rather rare term. It's only used eight times in the New Testament, and seven of those are in this passage. So it's a very unusual word. Um, and uh, it's tricky to define. If you look at five different commentaries, you will get about seven different uh, interpretations of how much a talent would be worth. Um, I think it, it, so it's illuminating for us to realize that a talent is not a measurement of currency. It is a measurement of weight. It is a measurement of weight. It is, a, it is a, the highest unit of weight measurement that would have been used at the time Jesus was saying this. It's the highest unit of weight measurement. So you didn't know that when you, were, when you came to church this morning, you were going to get a third grade lesson of uh, weights and measures of the ancient world, uh, but that's what we're going to talk about. So it's the highest unit of, of of a weight that would have been used, and a talent. It's not a. It's not an item, uh, or a or a specific amount of money. It's a measurement of weight. So we're not told a weight of what in this passage. It could be a weight of silver or gold or whatever, what have you. Um, but the point is, it would have been a lot of money because it's the heaviest weight and it's a very precious and expensive item 
with which these servants are entrusted. And the point is that, so the point is that, that the servants are given an item of immense weight and value. And so now for the first century Hebrew hearer of this parable, their minds would have quickly made a connection that we might miss. Um, they would have thought of the weightiest responsibility with which the people of Israel had been entrusted. What was the weightiest responsibility? And the weightiest thing with which they had been entrusted was the glory of God. The glory of God. See, the Hebrew word for kavod, or the Hebrew word kavod, it's the Hebrew word for glory, and it means literally heaviness or weight. Heaviness or weight. And so when Jesus is describing the heaviest object with which, the, with which God had entrusted their care, they would have made the connection between that and the glory of God, which is the heaviest of all objects, right? What is it that Jesus had said in verse 31? He said, but when the Son of Man comes in his glory, he will sit on his glorious throne. See, and again, so, so now in an Old Testament mindset, where did the glory of God reside? The glory of God rests on the mercy seat above the Ark of the Covenant in the temple. And so this is what would have come to mind for the first century Hebrew hearer. And remember, the context that Jesus is describing, what, is he, what does I say he, the context of this whole passage and the context that he'd been describing before? He was describing the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. So, 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 um, so what Jesus is telling these pe- the people hearing this parable is that they've been, what they've been entrusted with is not money or houses or resources or any of that. He's saying that what they've been entrusted with uh, they, as stewards is the mercy of God. The weightiest thing that they've been given, uh, that's the weightiest thing they've been given, and the same is true for us, that what they've been entrusted with is the mercy of God and the kingdom of heaven, the gospel of God of Jesus Christ. That's the thing that they've been entrusted with. It's it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. So what is it that we've been really been given the most precious thing that has been entrusted to us is not our money, it's not our resources, it's not any of that. The most precious gift that God has been given to us is the mercy of God. Entrusted for us, entrusted to us to multiply. And to grow the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if that's what Jesus is really talking about, that, that we've been entrusted with, um, how does that reinterpret the passage for us? If that's what Jesus is saying. I think there's a lot makes a lot more sense of what's going on here, uh, because what we've been given is, is, is the mercy of God. Now what do we do with it? And Jesus really only portrays two options uh, for what to do, uh, what we can choose to do. And, and that is, um, <clears throat> and the, again, as I said, these are choices we really want to pay attention to because the next passage is the sheep and the goats, right? Uh, and um, you know, on the one hand, we have the, the servant who received the one talent and he buried it, right? What did he do? He buried it. Uh, he didn't know what he, he didn't really understand fully what it was that had been entrusted to him and what had been given to him. Uh, it, he didn't realize that this priceless gift was entrusted to him, not for his own benefit, but for the benefit of the master. It was, it was entrusted to him for the benefit of the master. And so we, we do those same things, don't we, right? We, we don't realize uh, what, we have, what, we have, what we have in the, in the, the gift of mercy and, and the gospel, uh, and, we, and we don't realize what we're supposed to do with it. And, and the problem with this is, is, is exactly what we see in this passage. Um, Jesus, look at, just look at Jesus' response in verse 26. He says, you wicked and lazy slave, right? Uh, think about that. That's strong language. You wicked and lazy slave. Uh, and then he throws him out of his presence. Uh, because, because here's the thing. If this guy, if, if what has been entrusted to him represents the gospel, it represents the good news of what God is doing on, on behalf of the, the rest of the world, it represents the mercy of God, then that sort of response starts to make a lot more sense. Uh, because he's saying that keeping the mercy of God to yourself is such a serious sin that it would cause someone to be cast out of fellowship with the master. That's strong language. And, and think about it. Uh, this is why the servant has his talent taken away. It's not because, it's not because um, uh, you know, God, who's represented by this master, is, is somehow vindictive or trying 
to get back at them. It's just the nature of how spiritual things work. Uh, uh, um, that that it's that uh, that that it, it, it that you it's not something that you can hold on to yourself. It's got to be shared with others. And that's the point of this passage. We've been entrusted with the mercy of God to share with others uh, the gospel. If we don't um, do it, then we are at risk of losing it, uh, just like this last slave. He didn't understand the potential impact that his gift could have had uh, ultimately in service of the master uh, that, that his gift could have had for the sake of others. He didn't understand that. And so do we recognize the tremendous gift that God has entrusted to us and his gift of mercy? And if we do, it will affect everything about the way we live. It will affect everything about the way we live. If we really understood, if we got it deep down in our bones, what it is that has been given to us, not the, you know, it's, it's been given to us, and if we got that deep down in our bones, wouldn't that affect everything about the way we live? On the other hand, we have the example of the first two who invested their talents. And you see the, the, the servants recognize, these servants recognize the tremendous uh, responsibility that had been given to them. Uh, these servants lived the kind of lives that demonstrated that they uh, understood that they had a limited amount of time before the master would return. They didn't know when it was going to happen. And so they got about the business that the master wanted them to do. And they lived as though they truly believed he was returning. And then what happened, right? Um, these servants were greeted with the admonition, well done, good and faithful servant, right? Uh, look at verse 21. You were faithful in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Usually we think of that passage, we think of that passage, when do we think of that passage? When do we reference that? Like at funerals, that's what we think of, because that truly, friends, is the hope that we're living for, to hear one day the Lord say, well done, good and faithful servant, come enjoy all that I have prepared for you. And, and so that's what we see is that, that, that what happens as a result of this is that they are invited into deeper fellowship with a master. They're actually given more responsibility, he says. And isn't that the same thing that happens to us when we are, when we are stewards of the, of the gospel, when we're stewards of the mercy of God? Uh, that's what happens to us as well, isn't it? We're actually given more of the mercy of God the more that we give it away. The more that we share the mercy of God with other people, the more uh, we end up with ourselves. We end up more than we started out with before. So what about us? Here's the thing. What, what Jesus is telling us is that we have been entrusted with something much more precious than money. We have been entrusted with something much more precious than money. I said at the beginning of this sermon series that you, by the end of it, you will probably wish that we were just talking about money. And I, I, think, I think really if we understood the implications of what we have been given and the, the demands on our lives that this comes from being a steward of the gospel of Jesus Christ that has this thing entrusted to him, or, or that he has entrusted us, that we are, and we are responsible to him for it, then I think that we would wish, man, can't I just give like 10% and be done with it? But see, what, 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 what we have been given is the mercy of God. We've been given the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so the question this parable is, is asking us, and the one that we should be asking ourselves is, do we recognize the immensity of what, we, what has been given to us? And what are we doing with it? Are we sharing it or are we keeping it to ourselves? Because if we recognize the immensity of the gift that has been given to us in the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, it's something that consumes, it would consume our entire lives everything and change everything about everything that we do living as though our finances are a gift from god that's not hard that's actually not all that hard living as though we are stewards of the mercy of the gospel uh, or the mercy of god and the gospel of jesus christ who are who are responsible for sharing it with everyone here in marion indiana and around the world that's hard that's hard and that's something that demands everything of us. And so, and so again, that's where I say, like, if you think, if, 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 it, if it's not that our money is off the hook, right? 
It's actually further on if we understand this, right? Um, and, and, what, what, and, and frankly, the, the, once, we, once we understand what should be on the hook, which is our whole lives committed to this one cause, the cause of Christ, knowing Him and making Him known, once we get that deep down into our souls, and once we understand that, then actually, listen to me, the, 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 the money thing doesn't become, a, the, the money and, and stewardship of finances and resources, that becomes secondary. That, that becomes, that, that's not a problem at all. That's not a problem at all. Once, once I and myself am so far on the hook, having my money on the hook, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because what this parable demands from us is everything. Everything we do and everything we have and everything we are to be brought into the service of stewarding the gospel of Jesus Christ. So in a moment, the worship team is going to come and uh, we are going to sing a, a, closing, a closing song um, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Because it's it's not so much about it's not so much about the, the, the you know I mean I, I, what, the church I served previously we'd have a, a finance stewardship thing every year and we'd have a and some people would write a financial commitment. No, 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 that's not that's not what that's not what we need. What we need is is your we don't we need not something that you can write on a card, but what what the what the gospel of Jesus Christ demands is your whole life your whole life. And so my, what I would like is for us to make this song our prayer, our prayer uh, today to commit everything that you are and everything that you have to being a faithful steward of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the question that, the, the question that this passage calls us to ask ourselves is this, am I being a faithful steward of the mercy of God? So people, I, I don't know about you, but this, this for me, it creates, it creates a burden Am I being a faithful steward of the, of the mercy of God? Because what we see is that is ultimately how we will be judged. And I want more than anything to hear him say to me, well done, good and faithful servant. Come enjoy all that I have prepared for you. And so this parable, Jesus doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't have a backup plan for sharing his mercy with others. And that's why he's so serious. Because he entrusted it to these servants. He trusted, entrusted his wealth to these servants, for them to use and for them to, to, to steward. And so if they don't do it, no one will, right? That, that, that if they don't do it, no one will. And so it is for us. The reality is, is, is that if we recognize what has been entrusted to us, the mercy of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, to share, and the, the reality is that if we don't recognize that and we don't share that gospel with this, with our, with our, with this community, with our family, with our friends, and with our family members and everyone we know, if we don't do that, no one will.
Father, indeed, that is our prayer, that everything that we've just sung through, that each one of of those parts, our intellect and our love and everything else that we've just sung about, would be ever, only, always, and all for you, so that you might receive the glory you deserve and that others would understand and know who you are. Would you give us that grace and that power to seek you with everything we have? It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we depart this worship service, may you go now into the world and be consecrated wholly to him that one day you may hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Come enjoy all that I prepared for you. As we depart this worship service, I leave you with these words. Now may the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide on each and every one of you until Jesus comes or calls. Amen. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop working. Never stop. You never stop working. in the darkness my God that is who you are 
Cause you are a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are.